Hello, we would like to welcome you to our presentation on Drum of the Grabbed Commons, Corporate Social Responsibility as Anti-Politics Machines and Local Responses by myself, Tobias Haller, and by my colleague Jean-David Gerber. We are from the University of Bern Social uh, Institute of Social Anthropology and Institute of Geography. We did a comparative research on land as commons grabbing uh, based on social anthropological methodology um, doing research in four countries, Morocco, Ghana, Malawi and Tanzania, and I will present some data from Morocco and Ghana. The result of this research is that land, grabbed has, land grabbing has to be understood as common scrabbing, which is often hidden also by the promise of material development benefits through investment, market incorporation, private land titling, and also compensation measures. To these add corporate social responsibility development schemes that actually promise development that come through investments in land. We are asking how does this grabbing process unfold and what are the commonest responses to uh, these processes. Theoretically, we use um, concepts um, of the project Logical Land Acquisition and Gender in Africa, which was funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation. We use James Ferguson's anti-politics machine uh, that critically um, interrogates the development discourse that is used in uh, large investment schemes and that hide power asymmetries and also the way that um, uh, formerly common property is transformed into prior property or state property and thereby um, the commons are taken away. We also use a new institutional political ecology framework called NIPE that explains actually how these anti-politics machines are used in a strategic way by uh, powerful actors and that within and as well of course outside uh, local communities. How these actors select institutions, we call this process institution shopping, and how they legitimate the grabbing of the commons. That approach also explains how actually local people react and respond to that, ranging from um, James Cott's idea of weapons of the week, not very openly, um, towards more um, uh, conflictive ways and also ways in using uh, the courts and also in ways of mobilizing actually um, less powerful people for powerful reactions. That's what we call the politics uh, machines. We would like to show that what we have in front of us is not a tragedy of the commons, but a drama actually of the grabbed uh, commons. The rationale of this drama of the grabbed commons by investors and by the state is usually the narrative of the creative destruction of the old commons. The rationale is LSLAs are expected actually to lead to a change of some kinds of resources, land, water, biodiversity, uh, wind, etc., or even wastelands without property and to transform them into productive assets, valuable crops, monetary resources, or also infrastructure compatible with the idea of development and also neoliberal and green capitalism. The second rationale is while some of the commons disappear, pasture, forests, hunting grounds, etc., new ones are created through these corporate social responsibility measures by infrastructure, irrigation channels, special community funds, classrooms or dispensaries or small development projects. And this is the anti-politics machine, CSRs, as promise of development, actually hiding the power asymmetries and the grabbing of the uh, communal uh, land and the communal resources. Corporate social responsibility um, acts in the following way, promotes actually the notion of companies sacrificing part of the profit and account for the social costs that they sort of generate. This has been criticized by many, uh, for instance, um, Greer and Bruno call this a greenwashing by which actually um, it can be hidden that environmental impacts actually unfold via these investments uh, in agri-industrial land or mining or other um, activities. Dolan and Rajak, who wrote a very good um, edited volume on the social anthropology of corporate social responsibility, write, I cite, rather than framing business interests to reflect social imperatives of community needs, Corporate social responsibility can have the counter effect. It reframes the interests of communities and governments to fit the priorities of the corporation. 
This means the proclaimed win-win-win outcomes, winning the economy, winning local people, and also winning the environment for uh, sustainable development, needs to be really confronted with empirical uh, research, and that's what we did. We focus first on the case of Morocco. There, a big solar energy power state company called Mazen um, set up a huge or the largest solar um, project in Africa, supported by the king of the country with funds also and technology from the European Union. 38 uh, corporate social responsibility development projects were set up, which is really amazing. But however, these were mostly not adapted to local needs. Payments for basic or unwanted services um, with very bad uh, distribution, very bad access, actually, uh, which do not uh, really sort of compensate what has been lost in this area. Often also the deal that were signed by the communist uh, Berber groups, actually, who gave away this land, um, this um, deal was related with low and not accessible compensation and did not include actually all communities and specifically also not women. It removes high pasture uh, high, um, plateau pastures and herbs which were seasonally very important for women and also for seasonal pastoralists so a very low price actually was received for so-called idle land whereas people are actually excluded from many of the benefits so this means loss of cash specifically women were collecting herbs to feed goats to sell the meat on the market and got some cash for it um, that was lost and also mobility and access to water uh, was lost but this is actually the, not the drama um, of the tragedy of the commons, but um, it is uh, rather actually the drama of the grabbed commons. What were then the reactions of these um, losses, actually, of um, resources? It was rather weapons of the week that got louder and louder. Local people started to realize after some time that they lost access actually to their um, comments and complaints on also failed access to funds by which actually projects should have been paid and also badly adapted CSR projects. The second project is um, from Ghana, the Ghana Agriculture Development Corporation, GATCO. This is a rice cultivation project in the um, northern plain area of the country. This research is done by Christina Lanz. Gadgo get, got land via local chiefs uh, who were installed through the colonial process without any consultation uh, with the state and also not with local subgroups, farmers and pastoralists. The company promised jobs for the land and a lot of these CSR projects uh, via chiefs. Uh, but at the same time, Gatgo destroyed a lot of commons, land close to rivers, fish ponds, grazing areas as well, without any compensations. Also, a few jobs were um, offered, and only the women could do some after harvest rice picking, which then was also sold by the company labeled as Gender Project. So, a huge loss of cash and subsistence sources for local people, specifically women, while the chiefs profited. So, we have a case of elite capture. The local reactions here were more severe than in the first case we show. It shows the range of local responses and reactions. Here we had collective action, specifically violence, also by pastoralists to threaten to use violence to get back the land. But also the youth um, of uh, this area were not really happy with the resources which were removed from them and started to challenge the elites and also the chiefs for selling the land for not really receiving something in return and even court cases are filed. So you have here rather something which moves into um, a politics machine actually activating um, local responses to this. The result compensation discourses of LSLA and of CSR projects use neoliberal development justification. So gender development um, and actually women empowerment or sustainable wasteland development, uh, securing livelihoods through jobs which are presented, entrepreneurship pushed, also fostering food security, 
um, bringing land titling and also being benevolent uh, market um, exchange as well and also very needed development in the local region. The results are that the, all these are actually anti-politics machine or a major anti-politics machine operating here. There's a large gap between promise made by the investors and the reality. This disappearance of the old um, Kompu resources uses the private, especially marginal groups and women, from access to these resources. Few new jobs, infrastructure development is minimal and uh, CSR measures are rarely adequate and accessible for local people. So the new um, uh, commons do not meet the expectation actually of the users of the old commons and hide and justify actually commons grabbing. The conclusion is we do not have a tragedy but a drama of the grabbed commons. It is a window for opportunity for few and it leads to differentiated responses. It ranges from weapons of the weak to resistance in the form of political pressure on institutions who can shop and activate legal claims, challenging as well elites, uh, etc. It is a drama but not a tragedy because actually it still unfold um, that uh, people can react if they have the power to do so. And it depends on time related impacts and options for legal and informal collective action. So politics machines that can install that needs longitudinal participatory research which is requested and which we did in the project. Thank you very much for your attention and please check on the following literature which is here on the list.